the Women's Super League returns this weekend and we've got quite a game to look forward to live on Sky on Sunday evening. Champions Chelsea kick off against Tottenham. It was a thrilling title race last season, so can we expect the same? So, guys, Sam Henry, what should we be looking out for in the WSL this season then? You know what, I think we say it every year, it's bigger and better than ever and I feel like that is true this time around. I mean, some of the business we've seen this summer has been so exciting. And Sam, let's kick off with Chelsea, your team. You see Lauren James here. It looks like they're not going just for the league title this year. They want it all, don't they? Yeah, and I think you can tell by their business. Obviously, they won the league title last year. They've won the last four in a row as well. Won the FA Cup, got to the League Cup final. And I think with the squad that they already had, they were probably confident of, you know, challenging for all of these trophies again. But some of the business they have done has been incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Katarina Macario, USA International, signed from Lyon. That's a really remarkable piece of business. And they also got Mia Fischel as well, another US International. And she comes in from Tigres in Mexico, where she scored 35 goals last season. She's joining a stacked attack with Sam Kerr already. It's been really exciting to see like, how many goals this Chelsea team can produce next season. Hannah Hampton as well. She joins from Aston Villa. This means they've now got three international keepers just in their squad alone which is uh, absurd in many ways. And then Ashley Lawrence, one of the best fullbacks in the world. She comes in from PSG, a Can Canadian international, over 120 caps for her country. That is the kind of experience they need to get over the line. And as you say, it does look like they want the Champions League too. Narrowly lost out to Barcelona last season um, in the semi-finals. And they want to go one better this year. It's a huge boost to Chelsea. But also, Sam, let's talk about Alessia Russo at Arsenal, because Arsenal have stack their attack too. Yeah, and this one's actually quite interesting because obviously they went in for her um, in the January transfer window. They set a world record fee and obviously Manchester United rejected that and then they got her for free in the summer. And you can see why, you know, she scored 10 goals in the WSL last season, was amazing for England during the World Cup, scoring three goals as well. But I think her start to her Arsenal career has been I'd say half and half, it's been good and, and a little bad in a sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough to criticise her really because, I mean, Part of playing for Arsenal is playing in the Champions League and they're not going to be in it next season because they lost in that qualifier to Paris FC. That was absolutely devastating. She scored twice in that game, which finished 3-3. She then missed the spot kick, which meant that they didn't progress. So I don't think you can begrudge her too much. But yeah, Russo back on the score sheet for England uh, in a recent game against the Netherlands and in defeat. But yeah, so she's still in with the goals and I think she's going to be brilliant for this Arsenal side mm. this year. But let's talk about Manchester United because... That's a big loss for them, uh, you know, their top scorer last season walking away. And they'll be wanting to push on from last year, which saw them only lose out in the title by two points. And also, they'll be wanting to keep Manchester red because we've seen City come out and strengthen in the summer too. Jill Ruud, the Dutch international, that's such a good addition in the middle of the park. And yeah, coming from Wolfsburg, who got to the final of the Champions League. But nine new additions into this Manchester United squad, including Gemma Evans, the uh, Wales international star. We've got Gabby George, that was a deadline day signing from... Everton, so much experience, who's going to replace on a battle at the full-backs role. And also up front, Hinata Miyazawa, who finishes the Golden Boot winner for Japan with five goals. Could she be the person to fill in the void left by Alessia Russo? Yeah. We'll wait and see. However, probably their best piece of business is holding on to Mary Earps. Yeah, I think that is a big, big boost. We've seen what she's done at the World Cup. You know, what a dominant force in goal. And I think, you know, she did say that it was a tough decision for her to, you know, make. You know, there's there's so many teams that are going to come in for you. They're, they're going to make world record um, um, fees for you. And I think them keeping her is going to be amazing for their season and, and what they want to achieve in the WSL. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also, if you look lower down the table, this is why I think it's going to be such a good year, because teams like Brighton, who finished second bottom last year, they've also strengthened this summer. I mean, to go out and make 11 new additions this year, Nikki Everard, the Belgian international keeper, she's coming in in goal. But the big addition for me is Pauline Bremer in from Wolfsburg too. 13 goals in 24 league games for Wolfsburg during her time there. Champions League finalists, only 20, over 20 caps for Germany too. That's the kind of signings that Brighton will be needing to push up the table and really, you know, become a threat once more. And she's going to be joining the Golden Boot Race next year, Sam, which mm. looks like it's going to be better than ever once again. Yeah, I think, I think last year was incredible. Obviously, there was a few, few players that scored over 20 goals and one of them was Khadija, Khadija Shaw for Manchester City. scored 20 goals in 22 appearances. Didn't have the greatest World Cup for Jamaica, wasn't able to get on the score sheet, but I think 
she's going to probably use that as motivation to start that hit the ground running in the WSL. Manchester City, like you said, they've made a few signings as well. And obviously, um, Rachel Daly, who did win it, is still going to be in that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe Sam Kerr at Chelsea as well. But it's, it's going to be, it's definitely going to be a, a, a tough call this season. Yeah, you're right. Sam Kerr got 12 goals last year, which was low by her standards that she's been setting so over the few years we saw what you know she can do when, when she's back in the fold saw that amazing goal for australia against england but yeah bethany england that's someone else we have to consider too 12 in 12 for spurs when she joined in january a full season she could be pretty le lethal in that side so yeah loads of big names to look forward to in the wsl um this year and yeah it kicks off live on sky sports chelsea versus tottenham 5 30 on sunday sam chelsea Emma Hayes still in charge there. Do you think that they've got what it takes to go five trophies in a row, five titles in a row? I think it's hard to look past it. Like you said, with the, the additions that they've made to the squad, I think the squad depth for all the competitions that they're going to be in and the fact that they're going to want to challenge for all of them, they're going to be able to ro rotate as well. Lauren James is coming to her own and is looking like she's, she's definitely going to be in a conversation one of the world's best players. So I think it's, it's hard to look past them. I'm, I'm going to put them as the favourites and, and for them to do it again and hopefully go all the way in the Champions League as well. Yeah. For me, it's Arsenal of all those additions back. Russo up front. But yeah, let's wait and see what happens next year.